I am your or wizard, yeah. Welcome to Psyculturist. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's cooking time. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Hi, 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 hi. Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Next stream. Everything came in. We have the 4K camera here. We literally have the new microphone. We have everything, ladies and gentlemen. I just need to go ahead and set it up. These are the brand new headphones that came in. They're fucking amazing. I've been testing them out. I literally had five minutes to test them out as soon as I got home from work. So I am so fucking excited. Uh, anyways, let me start off by saying this. Guys, I appreciate you all. Let's make next week, if next week is a finale, let's make next week the biggest fucking finale out there, man. Let's fucking crush it. Let's literally come through. Let's cook. Let's cook together. Uh, so on and so forth. I hope you guys are ready. I am getting everything set up here just for you guys. Uh, if we're going to cook today, we're going to cook, ladies and gentlemen. I do have my handy dandy pan here. I have Senor Pinguino. I have the girls in the background here, all my little uh, everything. Guys, are you guys ready? Uh, if you guys are lurking, hey, we tend to pause, we tend to analyze. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Welcome on in. Hey, I appreciate you guys being here. I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to each and every single one of you guys for coming on through. I will give you guys a list of what's coming. Uh, July 2nd, we have Rudius's voice actor joining us for a conversation as we start off Moshko Tensei Season 2 analysis here live, followed by SB and probably Natalie Hunter joining us for a conversation after that. We do have our five anime rotation, uh, six anime rotation currently in the docks, which is Moshko Tensei Season 2. Right, a seasonal anime which will go live for voting on the Discord pretty soon, uh, starting on Monday, I believe. The next one is Heavenly Delusion, Arcane, uh, Steins Gate, and currently what's being voted on is in between Shinseki Yori, Recreators, I think Serial Experiments Line is in there, um, Vinland Saga. There's a lot of wonderful shows on the poll right now that your vote can make a difference as to what we analyze next. Oh, Lane is not in there, but guys. Go vote, literally make your voices heard. I can't say this enough. It is your opportunity. If you guys want me to analyze the show to make your voices heard. With that being said, guys, I love analyzing stuff. Every single time I, I, I got to say this, my videos are not to go ahead and just pog champ 99% of the time, even though I feel like I do, but like, it's not just, you know, like, <laughs> like the videos are quite literally as a way to go ahead and get it, gain a deeper understanding of uh the characters and whatnot like you know the situations the power dynamics everything that is set right uh it's a psychoeducational material in fact all oshinoko videos are completely unmonetized and 99 percent of all videos on the channel are unmonetized so i do want to go ahead and say that out there is this is for mental health purposes for promoting and destigmatizing some areas of mental health and talking about that uh, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you a ton. I can't say that enough. If you guys like the content, hit that like button, subscribe, all of that stuff on YouTube. If you guys are here on Twitch, hit that like button, follow, or follow. Let me know that you guys are alive in here. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Episode 11 is going to be in 4K. You guys could, should come check it out. Make it one giant ass party celebrating Oceanoko Season 1. Come join us next week on Friday. That's when we're going to go ahead and get started at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what else to say other than uh, I hope you guys don't mind if I pause a lot because your boy just started some new classes as well uh, or about to start. So let's go. I said, let's go. And I press a go. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me back it up. I swear people are going to fucking kill me and I don't mean this as a joke. Hold on. <laughs> well, okay, we're now taking a different approach to this, right? We're taking an end of life therapy approach, an evaluation, a le legacy psycho, like literally an end of life uh psychological approach to this, right? Hold on. Interesting. Okay, okay. Hold on, guys. Really fucking interesting. 
I feel like I've over. By the way, these new headphones are fucking amazing. I, I hear the singer in 8K, bro. It's like in every cell in my body. I just hear it. She's like in me, bro. She's like really deep inside me. That sounds really dirty. It's not. It's not. But take that back. It might have been so <laughs> Not like that. No. Take that back. Throw it out. Like, it, it's really good. I can hear like the different. Anyway, I'm going to shut the fuck up. This is, this is really a really good head. I'm turning red, aren't I? I'm going to stop. So. Let me back it up a little bit and walk you guys into uh, <laughs> into this, right? So I want you guys to think about this as an end of life perspective, right? So we know for thanks so much for the sub, Lord Ham Tank. I appreciate it. Uh, when it comes into this perspective, let's go ahead and talk about this empty bed. In therapy, we use a technique called the empty chair technique, right? Which is a way to go ahead and visualize aspects of ourselves and or of people that have hurt us, traumatized people that we've lost so ever in an empty chair and be able to heal from it. What do we see here but an empty bed? It even an end of life therapy, something that comes to mind, especially if it's like in a higher level palliative care, you know, uh, residential homes, whatever you guys want to go to call them. There is a technique like this also done for that, for people to at least be able to go ahead and bear in mind with it if they have the time to process and they're not burdened with new people coming in. You know, saying goodbye to the person that was once there. This is fucking wild for me. Like, that's Serena's bed from... The, exactly, Lapis, exactly. So this is Serena's bed from the hospital, but she's not in it. So what are we representing in our minds for them to be in there, Right. So in my mind, immediately, what I wrote in here was end of life therapy, right? I was right. Uh, I was writing in here end of life therapy or end of life technique, specifically with the Gestaltian technique of uh, an empty bed or an empty chair technique, right? So that way we're filling up, like, the, we're filling up this chair, this blank space with our own interpretation as to who they are as individuals, right? So Rena's no longer there, but yet her pictures and stuff that she left behind are still there. This must mean that this was in between the time period where she died and before probably the doctor uh, passed away. We're seeing the ghost of Serena's future flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's also, think about the time period like this. This was because that that bed at some point in time had to have been filled with another person. Yeah. Hi, Lola Orange. Welcome on in. So that bed at some point in time, m no worries, Star. Appreciate it. Must have been filled in by another person, uh, another client, another whatever. But yet we're, spe we're specifying this time period. What does that mean, chat? What would that mean for you? By the way, no spoilers in the chat, please. Please, for the love of God, no spoilers. Uh, so this is where my mind is working at. I'm working through this end of life perspective and immediately what comes to mind is legacy. What is the legacy that Serena left behind that the doctor was so inclined in, right? That he can't let it go and vice versa, right? Because I'm sure that there was a deep attachment uh, going forward uh, that she had probably left on him as well. Serena's death also happened during the doctor's residency as we heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. She left a bed. She didn't even just leave a, a bed behind. She left, literally left her uh, parts of her aspect, parts of her soul behind if, if need be. So she's over here, right? But the da 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 media. Going through, going through, going through, going through. And it's approaching the TV screen. This is what I love about it, right? Because what legacy is she leaving behind? It doesn't even matter that the bed, the empty bed is there. The bed where Serena died is there. No, the camera is like literally like you can see it off in the background is zooming past it and it's going directly to the TV. Boof, boof, that's fucking blowing my mind because let, 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 let's even talk about that for a second, right? The TV, it was in the full version of the OP as well. Exactly, PS4. Yo, welcome on in. I appreciate you being here. But it's the attachment she left behind, but it's also the superimposed images, right, as to what she valued that we're seeing, i.e. the media, right? How does the media influence us to even care about certain things? I'm going to be straight up. Go, he might have kept it, but he can't, like, necessarily, unless he's the director of this hospital, it's going to be really, really difficult for him to just keep a room fully cleaned and in check without a new client be, being able to come in. 
if you were, say that we were having a session and you were to pass away and like, you know, your belongings are there. Like one thing that you left behind stays there. Uh, I just can't leave it in there for the next person to come in and see or experience that as well. Because all of a sudden for that person, they're going to come in with some preconceived notions as to what may have happened, you know. So people clean up. And it's also like, you know, keeping everything clean and whatnot. So it's like, mm, mm. Serena's legacy is Garo's feelings of love and something. Which brings up my next question. We all know Aqua, the doctor, <laughs> is in his full revenge cycle, right? They're in their full revenge cycle. Thanks so much for the hydrate, Raccoon. How you doing? How would that make Ruby and or Serena feel if she knows what, what happened? What would that do to an individual whose legacy is literally, you know, as we're, as we're looking in here, we're, we're looking at this empty bed of hers with what, with like the stuff that the media is telling them to fill in with. So that, that's exactly sort of where my mind is at is where is this going to go? Right? Like it is it, like, what would, what would that do to her to discover any information dark and or good if if you were in her situation, what would you, what would you even say? Would you be okay with the situation where people withheld information from you? How do you usually feel if that were the case? Would you tell your sibling or not? Would you tell them, hey, you know what? I'm in a plot for revenge, bro. Or not? Would you keep that for yourself? I can't imagine what what how she would react to find out Goro's fate. Did she like the doctor? Correct me if I'm wrong. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Did she like the doctor? Or wasn't it like some, like, like, uh, I don't, I'm not just talking about them being friends and whatnot. Yes. Okay. Making sure. Oh, no. It's been a hot minute. It's some, something that escaped my mind. Sorry, I'm, I'm mouth the gape because something just came to mind. Something just came to mind. Say that information were to come through. Hold on. <sighs> hold on. I'm fucking. I got the gooseies. I got the goosebumps. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Senor Pinguino, should, shall we explain? Senor Pinguino, right over here, is like, hey guys. Uh, hey, Ed, I just wanted to go ahead and tell you that, um, evil Ed killed your mommy. <gasps> That's right. And, um, evil Ed also killed the doctor. Boof! The doctor that you fell in love with, you know, the one with the double, the double thick thighs. <laughs> Bro, that would send me in a fucking range. Yeah. Senor Pinguino can speak English? See? He's, he's trilingual, I believe. Wait, both her loved ones. What would that do? What would that do, ladies and gentlemen? I think that that would set her off. The attachment framework at play, right? Because already you can tell just off of everything that happened, there's trauma. Did she have a secure attachment, ladies and gentlemen? Probably not. There's probably an anxious attachment that is being formed or an insecure attachment just overall. So off of that, more than likely what we're going to go ahead and get is, is an individual who I, I think the roles might shift if that comes and plays, right? It might shift in a way where we might see one darker, darker than the other. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay, I'll hold on. I'll hold on to that, into that one. I'll hold off to that one. Imagine anyone in Oshinoko having a secure attachment. <laughs> Anyways, I recently stumbled across a really cool concept that it's Rubies who should snap Aqua out of his revenge cycle. She is his sibling, someone who's been through the same thing as him and before. The reason for his... So, missing legs. Yes and no. I'm going to tell you why. Both of them experience trauma on different cycles, right? So both of them, like, can she snap him out of, out of his trauma? I think it has to be up to him. Like, if, if, if you really want to tell a good story, it has to come from him realizing he's fucking up, right? So, like, for example, 
if somebody else comes through you and is your force of change, how long will that change ha stay there for you? Not very long. A lot of people try and say, like, for example, your hands are your agents of change. Not really, right? A person can be an agent of change. Uh, water. Oh, this delicious water when I was out in the Sahara. Just, mm, it was my, my change, right? A Coke. Anything. Uh, co the, the, this. 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 The, the, could be li a literal agent of change. But the thing is, how effective is, is an actual full-on change if it doesn't come from within? With that being said, can she lead him down the path to change? Yes. In fact, there are two ways that this can go about, right? Hello, Needlessly Critical. Welcome on in. Appreciate you being here. There are two ways that this can go about. Welcome on in, dude. Kenji, dude, welcome on in. Welcome. I appreciate you being here. <coughs> there are two ways that this can go about. Number one. Stereotypical way. Missing legs. Hi, welcome on in. Hey, we you can step out of it. I'm by your side. We will take him down. We will rise to the occasion. If we work together, we can do anything. Way number one. Join in, being able to go ahead and like take the take the shift off of my 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 just a single handed episode like way. Or, you know, there's a second way. Hey, you got to snap out of it. Look, this is not healthy. We can find ways to go ahead and help you out. Uh, we can find a good therapist. We can walk towards this to walk through this. Is that realistically going to happen? And oh, she no, 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 co? Probably not, right? The third way, it's kind of fucked up way. I'm just going to be straight up about it. <laughs> just like, I'm going to get to him first. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, having this moment where all of a sudden you shift the script. All of a sudden, oh no, you're not doing it before me. <laughs> you really think you're going to do that before me? Oh no, oh no, chat. Ara, ara, that's all mine. Like, ooh, woo type bullshit. Like, it's, you know, all of a sudden you shift the responsibility from like, oh yeah, you're in this journey alone. Let's get you out of here too. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And guess what? Some people freak the fuck out the moment that happens. Some people all of a sudden are just like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. All right. Maybe you need some. Help. <laughs> oh, well, I think I might need my shift hat here, depending on how, how hard we go, guys. Holy shit. <laughs> like, guys, just straight up. Like, that's how you could like, that's the third option to go ahead and, and do it. Right. Number one, get the other, like, get the, get the first individual to go ahead and like, um, empathize with them reflect with them and be able to go ahead and go on this journey with you number two quite literally uh you know reflect with them but seek for uh like empathize reflect with them but seek for actual professional help number three or you have four options number three take the darker option oh thanks so much for the prime or the sub i appreciate it guys you guys are fucking amazing uh number three right we're cooking guys we're cooking it might be a little skewed sideways but that's okay number three you can take the down the undertone right where all of a sudden you're like hey hey wait a minute i'm gonna do this before you <laughs> what why didn't you tell me about this <laughs> all of a sudden the weight of responsibility goes from i need to kill him to wait a minute this is my sibling we're talking about i could do this because i justified it but i don't want to see them go down this path and that starts act acting up that way number four do nothing literally the do nothing approach who's in the kitchen with me but that's that's sort of what i'm what i'm uh what, what I, I know it's going a little flaccid there and it's a little harder but yeah the chef hat the chef hat <laughs> aqua's a syscon so i can see it i know i need to fucking clarify shit that's what i've learned recently anyway i just can't see that in ruby i don't see the insecure attachments i okay the insecure, insecure attachments, number one, comes from childhood, right? Did Ruby have two present caregivers that loved her and that she did not experience any form of trauma during her childhood? No. Does Ruby, uh, you know, often wonder and get a little anxious about Aqua or others? Yes, right? Uh, does Ruby, you, it like, you, you, she had Mommy Miyako, yeah, but does that, does that replace her mom? No. So there's trauma in there, and that means that there's trauma in the attachment center, right? Almost immediately off of the reaction that she was having off of Aqua going through and doing the, the, the dating game, 
per se, there was already a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of anxious attachment. By the way, anxious attachment doesn't mean, or insecure attachment doesn't mean, oh no, to the extremes. No, anxious attachment can be like, oh shit, I, I text him almost every day because I, I, I need to make sure that, that they're okay. Uh, I, I text them every 30 minutes. It's like an extreme form or every five minutes, you know, it's extreme forms. But there are just real aspects of it where it's like, oh, I need to hear back from this person. Like now your anxiety skyrockets. <laughs> oh, no, she's not good for you. No, 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 no one's good for you, brother. No one should date you but me. You know, that type of a thing. That's why it's called trauma the anime. Ruby might be less anxious in Aqua, but yeah, no doubt. Exactly, exactly. There's different layers to, uh, like, just like it, it, there's a spectrum and a lot of things. There's a spectrum and anxious attachment and uh, so on and so forth. To the doctor, maybe, but I imagine trauma would be way more visible in her present self than the relationships with Kana or Aqua seem pretty good to me. I would actually disagree with you on that one. I would disagree with you on that one uh, just because, for example, it, can she form friends and connections? Yes. However, Anxious attachment does not mean that you can't form pre uh, friends or like friends or connections. And by this, I mean any form of insecure attachment does not mean that, right? However, does this pop up in moments where Aqua is not in the picture or is fucking up or she thinks it's fucking up or, you know, she's gone through and so, so on and so forth? A little bit of an insecure attachment is seen, you know. How, by the way, a lot of people have an insecure attachment. I'm just I'm just throwing this out there, guys. A lot of people in this world have an insecure attachment. Yeah, a lot of people in this world have an insecure attachment. They don't even realize it because, again, it's a spectrum. Uh, but yes, 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 yes. Um, with that being said, for example, if we were to put this in here, Ruby's insecure attachment, like right here, closer to attachment... Aqua's insecure attachment, eh, probably somewhere like, you know, off the somewhere around there, you know, somewhere. <laughs> if we were to go ahead and analyze it like that, uh, insecure attachment is a mixture. It's, it's essentially you, you have two options and then you break down into more. You have a secure attachment, a foundation of trust, uh, belief that you can be there by yourself, that you don't need anybody else for your own uh, securement agreements and so on and so forth. You can handle stuff by yourself. You're not really anxious and or avoidant when it comes to making relationships or attachment or even with interactions with others, including siblings, family members, and or relationships, insecure attachment breaks down into anxious, avoidant, ambivalent, or ambiguous, right? Ambiguous means that you don't really know. Ambivalent can be a mixture of both. Anxious is like, oh no, senpai said he'd text me back five minutes from now, and it's been one minute, 32 seconds, right? And then avoidant is like, I don't want to talk to you. You guys are lame. 20 days go by and you're like, oh, I have a test tomorrow at 11.59 with like one second left. They text you and they're like, hey, just wanted to tell you, you know. <laughs> so there's different forms of attachments in there. And that's exactly why I'm throwing that out there. That's a really, really good discussion period, by the way. I love the discussion periods. Uh, so thanks so much for that point, Missing Legs. I appreciate it. Like, if you guys bring up some interesting discussions, bring them up. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to actually go in deep and have these discussions with you guys. Holy shit, yeah. And also, it's a spectrum in each one, guys. It doesn't mean that you're to the max. I, I, I just like showcasing the extreme attachments uh, because it's more easy to recognize, right? And that's what I'm saying. It's like a great majority of the population has an insecure attachment style uh, to a degree, but they don't really know as to what. But anyway, the first time, I know some people are probably like, hey, dude, you're fucking taking forever on the opening here. Anyway, let's go. So does this mean that attachment is bad? No! Attachment is wonderful. But being able to understand a person's attachment style leads... For example, if Ruby has an, an anxious attachment style, I'll tell you this right now. I'll, I'll fuck, I, 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 will, I will bet... I don't know. I will bet... It, it, I, I don't know. Five gifted subs, right? If I'm wrong. If Ruby has an anxious attachment style, this is what will happen. If in the future of the anime, future of the show, future of whatever, I haven't read the light novel anime, anything in between, or I've seen the anime, I haven't read the light novel manga, whatever the fuck's out there, literally only have time for stream. So this is me just fucking throwing it out there based off of what I know off of attachment style. In an extreme attachment uh, style scenario, what will end up happening is a ramification into the why. But why? Right? So if she ends up finding out at some point in the future that, like, say, 
the father ended up killing, you know, I and say the doctor or whatever. We're going to get a lot of but why. And this can lead into a really fucked up dark route. I've had a lot of people go into a psyche break, right? A psychological break in their mental health where all of a sudden... <laughs> you ever seen a person, like literally what people call like going off their rockers and shit? Um, not necessarily to that extent, but to the point where... Everything has a negative connotation. They can only see the world in dark. They must take action because the world is unfair. But why did the world do this to me? I've been trying to live a world that's pure and honest. But why? But why? And you'll see a lot of this aggression. And even when family members try and be like, no, you got to get out of here. No, I trusted you and you did not do this to me. You weren't there for me. But why? But why? You'll see a lot of but why stop popping up in an extreme anxious attachment scenario where that trust is broken at some point in time. It takes the alcohol, yeah, but this made me laugh so hard I cry. Oh, wait, what? What? Cooking again. Buenas noches. Como estas? Hola, buenas noches. Bienvenido, Lord Chiva. I am a ruby. I am a ruby. <laughs> I am a ruby. No, but that's, that's the overall reason why I'm throwing that out there is like, a person with a, with an extreme anxious attachment that is currently going through a lot of the trauma that they've already gone through, right? And then in the future orientation, just gets a bombshell dropped on them. You're you're literally looking at a psyche break, a, like quite literally. I am an idol, oh God. But that's that's the main per. <laughs> guys, guys. But that's the main reason why, right? And and then through that, you also have another perspective to take in. Would you feel like you could still trust your sibling if they just dropped all of these bombs on you? Probably not. I'll be honest, I'd probably feel left out. I'd probably feel hurt. I would probably do so on and so forth if that were to happen. That's exactly why I bring this up. When it comes to an anxious attachment scenario, that can happen. If it comes to an avoidant attachment scenario, you, you want to know what, what's going to happen? Say that in the future orientation. Same scenario, stuff pops up. Ruby disappears. She just disappears. She grabs, like, she grabs her stuff and leaves. Years pass. Ruby comes back, completely different person. This is out of Oshino Co, but I prefer to be alone, live alone. Then how would you even go about letting them know? If, well, floats, the way that you do it is you have an honest and dark and like open conversation about it, right? And by the way, just because you have one attachment style does not mean that you can't swing set from one to the other, depending on trauma, on events that happen, so on and so forth. But the way that you let people know this is you start off by saying, okay, look, I have some suspicions about what may have happened. Let's go ahead and talk about it, Chumu, right? So my, my prediction is if she has an anxious attachment style and there's a lot of stress and trauma and like, you know, say say that she's literally in like a, lot, like a pressure cooker, right? She has like a lot of pressure all around her, a lot of stress or whatnot. And say that, boom, a big revelation comes out. Or something that, like, her father killed I and her doctor or whatever. She will more than likely go into the dark path. Because more than likely, her mental state will start to deteriorate or take a big hit because of that anxious attachment style. Don't cook the ruby. But through that, I do want to go to the state. How do you release this information? You do it step by step. Hi. Hey, I, I like, I see you there. Um... So I have a theory and I, I want to talk to you about it because there's some information that came to light. You don't release everything all at once. You do it step by step. L literally like like giving a person that's like dehydrated, you don't want to give them all the water because that's going to that's going to that's going to affect them badly. What you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and feed them little bits and try and like get them back up, you know? Sorry. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to uh, pop off a little, a little bit too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Their deaths are a Chekhov gun. Psychology foreplay. Anyway. That's what's 
ってる。カヨン。なあ、ファクティッシュ。なあ。はい、my name is Poppy Ed and I will be reading for the role of、um, wizard.、Um, all right, sure. And what's he then that says I am a villain? Why, why, did, I, why did I go off like that? Why, 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 am I, why, am I, why am I fucking going off into something like that, ladies and gentlemen? What did I just see here? I, I am a wizard. I am a wizard. I. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> He had Vincent. No, that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. All right, let me get my chef hat on. Kyle's, can we give a shout out to Kyle's McGuire's, please? Okay, here we go. When it comes to this, right, one of the big things that I'm, I'm looking at, we're, we're cooking now, chat. Hold on. Is this. For Aqua, one of the big things, I know, I know, it's, 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 it's cooking time. It's cooking time. The fact that I was able to shower and come back with birth. <laughs> oh, God. Ed, you have passed the application. Yes, chef. Guys, guys, guys in the, sh in the chat. I got to get a yes, chef. Are you guys ready for this cook? C can I get a yes, chef? <laughs> can I get a yes, chef? Yes, chef. There we go. We got to get a yes, chef. Michelin star here. All right. Whoa. Chat, 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 chat. Are you guys ready? Yes, chef. All right. What are you? What are you? That's right. That's right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. <laughs> we chef. So, an idiot sandwich. <laughs> okay. So, specifically, when it comes to this, I want to go ahead. <laughs> no, you're amazing. You guys, we're going to cook some self care Doritos tonight for everyone. Y'all deserve love. Okay. Kyle, uh, Kyle's. Wow, Kyle's. I must really love you if, you, if that's the first thing that came out of my mouth. Like you literally, it literally just came all over. That it, your name just literally flew out of my mouth. That's the best way to put it. Those Doritos are raw. Anyway, specifically, what I'm getting at with this is, let's look at Aqua. Right. What does this look like? As though someone is in frame in front of a big screen. Right. For me, this looks like an audition. Right, it's the best way to put it. Now, now I'm using a theater perspective to to insight into this. Right, not just a theater, but also a film acting perspective. In case you guys don't know, I've done a couple short films, films, videos, stuff out there in the interwebs. I'm not gonna go ahead and talk about it. I'm just gonna go ahead and state it. You know, it's somewhere out there. But the the best way to go ahead and put it, it looks like a TED talk almost. Right, exactly, A. Roth, exactly. Uh, but through this. My thing is the way he's dressed up almost immediately gives me the vibes of almost any background actor, uh, like technician and stuff that I've that I've uh, that I've worked with. Right? I've worked with a lot of technicians and stuff, and a majority of them are just like, "Yeah, whatever. I'm gonna go have my sick break." <laughs> they're just like they hook everything up, and then they're in there just like actors come on let's go like they'll fix everything they're wonderful i love all my technical friends out there to death you guys are amazing uh pa son it's a stalker clothes it is missing legs it really is tech guys by the way drop some doritos for all the tech guys all the behind the scene people in the in the the world they literally bring us all the entertainment and shit but they don't even get enough credit all the animators all the people that work the lights that literally work sound uh that they're like the op like boom operators uh the people that do audio editing all of them that bring us this entertainment but are not even worth like are that aren't even recognized and shit yeah so the, the the main reason that, that I'm stating this is like my dude literally looks yeah he has a stalker's clothing but he looks like a background tech guy and stuff like this so as we're going through this what does this look right first one typical idol following I's example right and then look at this all of a sudden it looks like a slate hi my name is Ruby and today I'm gonna be auditioning for the role of an idol okay you know like <laughs> this looks like like a slate this looks like a straight up slate. This looks like the, the beginning intro to anything like that. Have you seen any of the behind? I saw 7.5, but I, don't, I haven't seen anything aside from 7.5. All 
All right, hold on. I'm gonna drop that cook. I'm gonna just say that it looks like it looks like a slate to me because that's often you know what you have to do is from here on up. Uh, unless you're doing like a full on like they need to see your full body at times. Sometimes they do, and it's hi, my name's whatever. So that's why I'm like, mm, mm. the theater of life. But isn't that funny? Because we, in, in a big way, we also encapsulate moments in our life like this into small little bite-sized chunk pieces in which we assume that people can get our, our life for us. I hate to put it this way, right? And, and, and if you're a professor, no hate towards you in any way, shape, or form. But also, fuck you. <laughs> like, I love you, but also fuck you. Because this has been indoctrinated into us where it's like, tell us about yourself. In five sentences, tell us about yourself. In five, in five sentences, tell us about yourself. Guess what we've just done? We've now narrowed you to realize who you are as an individual and label that in five seconds and or five sentences or a paragraph or whatever and, and tell, tell the rest of this class this. And guess what? From that moment on, every single class, if you've gone to college or university, your first week, what do they say of that class? introductions tell us about yourself and this comes up over and over and so we're perfectly crafting this lie that we must fit in five or six sentences in this paragraph or two that we must encapsulate who we are as individuals in our life and yet this has been a repeat repetitive norm that has literally started to like like that that goes on same thing in in a show like this to get blasted by real life yeah, same thing in a show like this. They perfectly crap. By the way, don't. I'm not saying fuck you. Actually, I'm, I'm. I'm bringing this up as an example, professors. I love you. You guys do God's work. Doritos in the chat for all the teachers, high school, uh, university, college, whatnot, because they are literally underpaid and overworked, and they do um they do God's work. That's the best way to put it. Like they deserve nothing but love and support. I was just using that as an example to bring in the next point, which is the next big point is this. In a show like this, we have a 22, 24 minute runtime, except for the first episode. We have a 22 or 24 minute runtime, and they're trying to encapsulate the life of these people. What does that mean, chat? And this is an actual question for you guys. They have 22 to 24 minutes to encapsulate this episode. Yes, Grimace. Yes, Cedric. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everything that the director, uh, that, you know, the audio engineers from steps, from whatnot is important. It is vital to a story that they're trying to tell. It might not be the exact same story that's in the light novels or manga or whatever, but they're trying to tell us a narrative, a story. Otherwise, heck, you know what they could have done? We'll skip the intro. Fuck it. We'll just go straight into the show. At the very end, we'll leave the ending. But they don't do that. In fact... They have a banger of an opening that has topped worldwide charts because it does a lot of wonderful things. It's beyond meticulous in the deets. I know, I know. But anyway, with that being said, this is also a summary because we're, we're taking a really deep look into someone's life. We're only 30 seconds in. We're almost an hour in. What the fuck? Guys. <laughs> Y'all have to like course correct me. Holy shit. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Hi, welcome on in, Rip. Appreciate you. Just want to say hi before I end the bed. Rip, appreciate you being here. I hope you have a good night. Stay safe. Appreciate you. Y'all be cooking. Ed here, time traveling. Hoof. I just noticed this. I'm such a fucking idiot. Oof. Oof. This is the whole Akana scene. And then down here in the I'm feeling good button. Oof. Oof. I know you used to have it back in the day, but my Google doesn't have that now. Man, that, that, oh. Oh, that's a, oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's, oh, I ain't feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Oh, man. But probably gonna have to be at work before the stream riot. Oh, this hurts. This hurts, man. I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling good. Oh no, Google, Google. Oof. Oof. 
This is really, really, really dangerous. This is really, really, really dangerous. Everyone else has seen in a safe shot, right? Or zooming in, trying to be introspective about what's going on, right? Uh, everyone, everyone is quite literally shown, at least so far, as like being super duper introspective, <laughs> like on the hunt, like being like, you know, so on and so forth. This, uh, as an actor, Number one, this might be. The symbolism in this and then the theater it, theater perspective in me is fucking screaming at me. A blackout. OK, a blackout in the theater world is usually like a lot of people know where the blackouts are. Right. Because if you're an actor, you more than likely already know when the blackout is happening. So that way, you know, whether to stand still or whatnot. But there's usually a form of safety for the actor to be able to go and get off the stage safely. Especially if it's raining or there's a hazard or whatever out there that's happening. This is almost, this reminds me almost of the street light as she was about to jump off. You know, a big symbolism like that because it's like she's not in her spot. She is not, yeah, but even if it's a lights out, right, that's usually a scene change or whatnot. But there's usually a way for her to be able to get off the stage safely. This reminds me. Of quite literally when she was on that bridge and about to jump with the lights, you know, the little lamp behind her and shit, the street lights. The reason, the reason why I'm saying that is because an actor knows when to hit, where to hit their spots and to be in the spotlight. I.e., for example, I'm gonna use this as an example. A good actor wants light in their face. A good theater actor will wants wants to be illuminated, wants to be seen, wants to be heard the entire time, right? However, you don't want this to happen. Where the lights are like literally behind you and stuff. Like, that is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Akana is also really dark in that picture, which for me makes me wonder, right? I'm gonna, JC, dude, thanks so much for the sub. I appreciate it, man. So much foreshadowing and symbolism I hadn't noticed before. Also, let me fucking move this. This shit's like all in my eye. So, look, this is what I'm wondering. She turns around. It's like she's in everyone's light, right? The limelight is on her. All of this stuff. Uh, it could even be like a representation of her own little world. And then she's off. Are we about to see a dark Akane path? If if not a dark Akane, are we going to see an Akane that goes against their main characters? Because everyone else is half half light, half... Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Full light... Half face, half face, half shadow, half like lit. Lit, complete darkness. Oh, are we about to see a dark Akane arc, right? Because all of us have our dark sides. We all do. We all, we all do. But are we going to have a character that literally turns dark and or goes against our main character's goals, whether it be Ruby or, or Aqua at some point? That's that's my main point is, are we about to get into into something like that? Anyway. Sorry, sorry. So here's the thing uh, we have already known the part where she tried to off herself. No, I'm not even talking about like dark sad Akane. I'm talking like, yeah, this was symbolism because look. Hold, hold on. Look at this. Right. Boom. The lights are on her. You can even call this the pressure. Social media comes down. But when that light, last light is on her, if I can get that. This this, this could be a perfect foreshadowing of, what, of her standing on that bridge about to jump when Aqua saved her. This could be a perfect f foreshadowing of that. Right. So tell me this. If it reached this, it could have moved on to another scene but it did not 
it did not. In fact, just like with everyone else, you know, uh, Kana has a the half like half shadow, half light, whatnot. That was totally fine for hers. But no, for her, we have to go to a full blackout. For her, she had all this spotlight, all this attention on her. We're going to go into a full on blackout. All the other girls don't get this. I have fucking chills, dude, because I'm like, what role is this going to go into? <laughs> Why are you everywhere? Anyway. Her being unnoticed in the left. Could be. It really could be on the squiddles. That's actually a really good. Yeah, could be. This is kind of sad. Hold on. This is. As a doctor, as a. We made it. Hey, welcome on in. Appreciate you, MP3 the Awesome. Uh, do you think it also stands for how she's in the spotlight and got the attention, but she's framed as evil in the editing? <laughs> yeah, it could be, Raylight. Actually, very, very true. That's actually a really good way of looking at it as well. Um, did I miss the opening analysis? That's a really good way. So, talking about this again, I guess an aspect that I want to touch on is if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you're in the medical care field, if you're a psychologist, a therapist, no matter where you are, thank you for the work you do. I hope you know that you are genuinely appreciated. You like you might not get all the recognition and whatnot, and I know therapists don't even get paid a lot, sadly, uh, but you guys are the absolute Gs or the true idols of this world, uh, and without you... I feel like a lot of us would be lost. Uh, even as a pharmacist, yes. Thank you guys so, so much uh, to everyone in the mental care field or if you're caring for others. Um, pretty much everything, Zedric. Uh, we, like, we go over basis of, of biology, basis of biological behavior, and a lot of things. But the reason why I'm saying this is a lot of people don't get the rec recognition that they deserve, right? As a doctor, as a whatnot... He only had a few couple of people like cheering him on, right? People that would clap from time to time. But when she th when they take off that mask, all of a sudden, you know, when he's reborn as the son of an idol or being an idol, an actor, everyone goes fucking wild and cheers for you and all of these things. It's, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's exactly what I was bringing up that show is, you know, doctors, pro medical professionals, so on and so forth, they don't get a lot of the love uh, in like, I don't know, like, they, they deserve all the love and everything. As a doctor, he has no color, and you can see through him. Yeah, but as, as the other way. Yep, 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 yep. I play healer in games, does that count? I play Mercy. <laughs> I play Mora in games, does that count? Oh, no. Uh, I've always found the second part with the Red Six menacing. Well, I mean... Isn't red also, like, isn't there, like, a red flower symbolism for, like, the flower of death, per se, or something? In, like, Japanese culture? Mora does not count. Yeah, I was thinking about these shots before, then, like, the show never focuses on recognition, either that or the doctor. Red spider... Oh, is it the red... Sp but anyway, sorry. Let's go. So we can kind of see a spirit bunny type thing, right? And 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 what I'm what I'm getting at in this is, hold on, I gotta. These are new headphones, and they're like really soundproofing, dude. They're like amazing. Like I can't hear anything, but like I can feel like the tension on my thing. So what I, what I was gonna say is, when when it comes to this one, right? I, I guess a big point that. It, Velvet, they're comfortable, man. They're so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that, that helped out and donated and meant a ton. We have all the things we need, so next stream will be 4K uh, beautifulness. But specifically what specifically what, what, we're, what I was going to touch on is what legacy do you want to leave behind? 
and I do wonder what legacy I has left behind for her kids. I'm not just talking about the legacy of her being an idol. I meant like she must have left a note. She must have left something for them for the, for them to remember her by in some way, shape, or form, right? Aside from just like being an idol, I feel like the legacy that like her teachings, her being their mom and whatnot, is left there. But for you guys, what legacy do you want to be left behind in? What legacy do you wanna wanna leave behind to others, ladies and gentlemen? As an individual, as whatnot, if you were to pass away today, how do you want to be remembered? If someone if someone did take your life, would you want them to take would you want others to take revenge for you, or would you want them to actually leave a peaceful life? This the reason why I'm touching on aspects like this is because a lot of this is like This is sort of reminding me of like the oh shit, I can hear in 4K oh like 2K now. I hear all the static and shit. <laughs> I hear the static of the real world. Take me back. Take me back. <laughs> so when it comes to this, I, I guess a big aspect that a big aspect that I want to touch on is I get, here in 2K. Yeah, a big aspect that I do want to touch on is this. I know I hear the cosmos again. The cosmos of the world. They're singing. Um, How would you want to be remembered by? And do you want people to go ahead and, and get revenge for you if need be? And tapping into the magic of the air. I am. I am. Big bang noises for real. The universe is singing to me. Oh, God. So. Comes to mind. This comes to mind. As Serena. As the doctor. Would they be okay with the actions that they have taken so far? Or does that is that going to cause more identity issues in the future? Is there going to be more obvious identity issues that may come in the future, especially when they start to veer off course and they start to introspect a little bit more and, and be like, would I be the same person or not? Anyway, sorry. I should probably flip this righty, righty tidy. All right, let's go. Are Bion and Mamma Mia co hooking up? Guys, guys, what episode was what episode was the Bion episode? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, what? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> guys, what what hey, ooh, best ship? Hey yo. Episode five, thank you. There's something that's bothering me. There's something that's bothering me. There is something that's fucking bothering me, ladies and gentlemen. So I need to... Sorry. In case you're, you're on YouTube and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? There's something that's fucking bothering me and I can't put my finger on it. So I just... What the f- <laughs> Wait, wait, wait.
Why include him in the opening? Why include him in the opening? That doesn't even make sense. Why include a background character in the opening? Why are we including a background character in the opening? I'm overcooking. I, uh... That oh, it's only on there for like a split second. Not just that, we're including the character It's not even his true character design. Mr. Senor Pion, you know, friends with, with Senor Pinguino, likes to be shirtless and shit. So why is he covering up? That doesn't even make sense. That's a complete juxtaposition of the character at hand. Like, my dude didn't even need to present himself. Uh, just an introduction to people like this. Yeah, he decided to, and yet here he's covering up. And in fact, he's a little, he looks a little fucking skinnier. I ain't gonna lie. My dude don't look as, as beefy, you know? That's weird. That's fucking weird. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. My my question to you guys. I do have a question because this brings us up again. Sorry. Uh, beyond backstory. I know we need it. S Senor Papillon. <laughs> so here, here's my question to you guys. What happened to Mommy Miyako? Does Mami Miyako, because you have to remember, Mami Miyako was presented to these kids, and these kids acted as gods. These kids acted as gods. Does she still hold on to that belief? Does she even acknowledge that memory? Because that, that's, that's, I'm sorry. It's like you just don't experience, yeah. Uh, she probably thinks she dreamt it. What Miyoko makes of them, yeah. Like, that's just something that, that's just something that crossed my mind. I was like, wait, so how does Mommy Miyoko still thinks about that? The plot was dropped. Do you think the kids are attached to Mommy Miyoko? I think Ruby might be. I'm not sure about Aqua. I think they attach themselves in some way, whether as acquaintances, friends, or maybe even as a stepmother. But I, I wouldn't. I, I, I don't really know. Maybe past that. Maybe that's why he's ho she's hooking up with Beyond. Guys, all right, hold on, hold on. From now on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> missing legs. I, I, I need you in on this, okay, everyone. From now on, we, we just gotta spread the wildest fucking theory out there. Yeah, let's see how far we can go. We can go with this. Pion and Mommy Miyako are hooking up, and that is the reason why Strawberry Productions has him on as, like, a part of their company, instead of Pion literally going to any other better, like, founded company. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that is going to be our running theory, is that Papi Pion be, be going in there with Mommy Miyako. The guy does see <laughs> Like let's 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 be let's be real here. He could be at any other company, right? He could be working for any other channel network. <laughs> Is their company that bad? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like that that's gonna be our running cook, okay? That is gonna be our running like shit tier uh cook. I can't believe you'd fabricate this kind of a lie about the, his wife. No, I don't want that. I don't want mommy Mia go to be single forever. <laughs> it should have been me. All right, let's go. Also, I got a comment uh, being like, Ed, you hearted my comment and you did this. Bro, I'm going to be straight up with you. 
So yes, the mods do take off a lot of like really, really mean comments. There are some people in there that just go in and are fucking savages. And thank you, mods. You guys, are, you guys are nothing but love and support. I appreciate literally each and every single one of you guys. Everyone that's in here, I treat you guys like family. I love you guys. We might shit on each other from time to time, but that's okay. And we might not always agree. That's a okay. But there's a difference between not agreeing and then coming in and attacking people or attacking me directly without it being like actual criticism. And that's not cool. So the mods eliminate that. And there was a comment out there that was like, dude, you hearted my comment. It's like, guys, mods also like ad people with admin privileges can also go in and look at comments and heart them and shit. Just throwing that out there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so when it comes to like this particular thing of like uh, Ruby, uh, Kana and whatnot, for me, it's like when, when I paid attention to it, the previous episode uh, and stuff, it's yeah. Mm, mm. Dorito for the mods, Doritos for the mods. Like, this, this for me seems like an interesting dynamic. Though I do wonder how long is this going to last. Because this all seems like a, like, hmm. I don't know. Why does he have green in his eyes? He has the dark star, but he has like a green, like... Like he's about to hit the omni, the like he's about to bend ten. Like if I like if I went through and like slapped his eyeball in, I'd transform into one of the alien creatures from from Ben Ten, bro. Super Saiyan Aqua. Green usually represents jealousy. <laughs> it's a lighting effect. Okay. Omni slash. Okay. All right, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We reached the ending of the opening. Guys, we are an hour in. Over an hour in. <laughs> when we compile, when we compile all the endings together. Oh, boy. <sighs> oh, boy. We can do this for days. We really could. Like it, it, like if you guys would give me the the time to do another roundabout, I could totally go and do, go through and do another opening analysis. Like I, I don't even mind it. It's gonna be over ten hours for sure. Thanks for watching, guys. I know. Totally, bro. I thought Aqua, like Aqua, is just blue. That's why I was like, hmm. Seashell, yeah, welcome on in, welcome on in, everyone. Hi, I appreciate you guys being here. If you guys just dropped in, if you guys are on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. If you guys are here on Twitch and you're lurking, hey, make sure to hit that follow button, lurk. It's totally okay, you don't have to participate in chat 99% of the time. As long as you're here, you're enjoying the ride. If you are enjoying that ride, hit that follow, it helps a ton. Or join the Discord, man. We're currently voting for future anime uh, for next season and this season as well coming up. Oh, man, I, I really needed that water, dude. Fuck. I used to like the opening. Oh, Nate. Nate. <laughs> I wonder how it would look. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. All right, let's go. ほら。<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, yeah. It <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> いや、まあね、二人でカラオケ行った時話し合ったんだけどさ、私たちのどっちが戦隊やってもパッとしないって話になって、そんな時、アリマちゃんが出した曲のピープイ見て。Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In a power dynamical perspective, why does Kana have all the power? She is chosen as, as 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 the center of the group. But isn't Japan like you have to respect your elders type of thing? 
Yeah. And wouldn't the elder in this situation be Mem? I I'm just put throwing this out there like, hold on, wait a minute. The power <laughs> <laughs> the power dynamics it, it, Mem is a Mem depends on the thing Mem gets no respect it depends oh god Chad's moving fucking gang. Uh Kana's been in the industry her whole life uh, true nobody is here um, entertainment experience uh, okay I, I guess I, I guess that makes sense I was just questioning that for a second I was like wait a minute I guess. I mean, if you're being reprimanded, you're being reprimanded. I, that makes sense. Pie to the face. I appreciate you. You're amazing. Thanks so much for the sub. Oh, Pepper's so good. Oh,ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそうけど。ペッパーそ
crumple up. This was, you know, when COVID was happening. I'm in a much better state now. Try to be better. Uh, people try better, yeah, to, to be successful. So the, the reason why I'm opening this up is because it takes a lot to even acknowledge. And, like, for me, for example, that was the first time where I genuinely acknowledged or came through, like, my family will come coming up go, was ch paycheck to paycheck. I'm not going to deny it. You know, uh, where they had to, like, if my dad got sick, it was a rough period of time and so on and so forth. So I was used to survival mechanisms. I can cook and clean and I can sleep on the floor. I don't mind. I've literally learned how to survive a majority of aspects like that, right? But that must have been very harsh. Yet. I'm very glad that everything turned out now and you're in a better position. Oh, thanks, Lee Bunny Bun. I am in a much better position. And this is why, like, for example, you guys, I, I know I state this, but If you guys have gone through a tough time, you can empathize with, with Kana. So that's when you learn how to cook like that. I did. I learned how to how to expand my cooking cooking routines and whatnot. But I also learned a lot of empathy. And I was humbled really quick about how not everyone has enough to cook. I remember this Chinese shop uh shop owners where all they did was cook a bunch of a bunch of food. They really, for some reason, they wanted to entertain me, like, be like, I wonder about American, like, taste buds. So they would always give me extra because they knew a little bit about my situation. Appreciate them to death. Wonderful individuals. Uh, I remember, for example, go, like, going through and, like, learning a lot about different forms of cooking. Learning about how to expand my own little vocabulary and even thinking, like, you know, okay, well, what can I do to better myself? What can I do to better the content that I'm trying to go ahead and throw out there? Slowly but surely, right? Even now, before I come on stream, I have an hour usually before before when I get off work, uh, before I come on stream. You guys want to know what, know what I do in that hour? In that time period, I usually buy a bunch of pizzas. Not, I don't have a lot of money. Even working as a therapist, as a psychologist, so on and so forth. We don't make a lot of money uh, because we're in the field to help others. But in that hour, I get a bunch of pizzas. I go and I hang out with a lot of the homeless population and we eat pizzas together. Or, you know, sometimes I take a burger because sometimes I want a little bit different. But we talk about what life is, how, what their story is and where they're going and what they want to go and accomplish. And then I come here and I stream. I never bring up their stories. I never talk about and anything that's going on with them because I respect them. They're going through a lot of times. But empathy at the bottom of our core is huge. For Kana to be able to realize that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. But I, I I, share this and, like, you know, I don't record any of that because I don't really believe in recording videos. Especially if, like, you know, I find it a little exploitive. But genuinely, being able to make a connection and talk with people and empathize with them where they're at. Because all it takes is one bad day for you to be have literally the worst bat worst day of your life and be in a moment where it can be uh it can be pretty bad so that's why i'm saying empathize with others connect with others and talk about your experiences and that's what the server and that's what this channel is for for that mental health aspect for growing for talking about things that might be a little uncomfy that people might not even know about so kana reflecting on that being able to even think about that for me means that she's grown and that she has the empathetic nature to understand what may be happening. And that maybe she doesn't have the greatest of boundaries, which is why when people press a little too much, she has that, like, maybe her love language might be, uh, you know, gift giving or attend, like being a, a caregiver for others. Oof. That's all I have to say. Like, damn. Damn. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to go that deep. Don't mean to, to go in an, in an aspect like that. But that's that's sort of why I like talking about concepts like this, because it's big. There's an unshakable Kana fan. Aw. <laughs> Great person. Oh, no, dude. I'm not. Uh, I'm just a dude. I'm just a regular. Honestly, Sayaka. And, and to everyone out there, I'm just a regular dude who's had a amazing and interesting life so far. You know? And that's why I appreciate all of you. So, yeah, guys. That's what I'm saying. Like, we're here for you. And I appreciate all of you guys. Yeah, because there's a lot of invalidation in, the, uh, in, in life and whatnot. Hello, everyone. Been enjoying these on YouTube. Uh, can now catch it. Good. Welcome on in, Bob Francis. Let me know when you guys are back from your ads. Drop a bunch of Doritos. I respect you as a great content creator. As a oh, Raylight, thank you. One day I hope to be, I hope to be great. One day I hope to be, uh, to literally get to a point where, like, people can like take this in as a medium and genuinely 
like not even for me right because I'm, I'm not gonna live forever sadly it is what it is but like these videos will probably like i want these videos to be thrown out there in the future and be like dude this is why anime was was being like thrown as like you know a real medium for change a real medium for analysis a real medium for self-growth like you know and it help people like start seeking help and that's sort of like the the cog in the wheel that i want to go ahead and do and maybe start throwing out my own theories at some point but that'll be live forever or die trying <laughs> fair but anyways with that being said guys <laughs> だけど Hey Sayaka, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. You're amazing. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the fact that like you're here today and you're able to go to wake up and do what you need to do. And even just waking up, I'm proud of you for being the individual that you are. I'm really, really happy that you're here and i'm like you know you might be debating between political science and psychology but i hope you know that no matter what decision you are make one that makes you happy because i care about you and i care about the decisions that you make dude kenji your comments on youtube i'm so glad that you're here as well i'm super duper proud of you guys like thank you so much as i'm listening to this it's true what they're doing it's time like a lot of people do not get validated a lot of people don't say uh you know don't say like thank you or don't say don't even appreciate aspects like that like missing legs dude i i know i've stated this but i'll state this again you, like i appreciate you so much you bring a lot of interesting discussion pieces onto the stream and like you've also helped a lot like i've heard about like you know one of the promotion things that like you know like that was put, placed on there and when your thoughts and whatnot the mods told me about it and i was like dude that's amazing missing legs from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you for coming in and, like Number one, being nice, being the, the nice person that you are, because you, you've been really interesting to have talks with and full on discussions about like, you know, like co the topics that you bring up. And as a person, I hope that you know that, like, I'm proud of you for being here, for being open, for being like alive today, for maybe even like doing what you need to do. Sorry, dude, I know that you're probably going through a rough time, but know that you are seen and you are heard, that people love you in this community, that you mean a lot. Guys, you are all families. And it don't matter if you're looking at this for the first time. You're like, wait, what do you mean? Like, if you're going through a rough time, if you've never heard the words, hey, I'm proud of you, well, know that I am proud of you. Know that this, like, random, dorky uh, Hawaiian with the pink, Hawaiian-looking dude with the shirt with uh, Pinster Pinguino right here, uh, wizard of a psychologist, genuinely cares about you. And I am proud of you. And I love you guys. And I hope that you're doing or that you find something that genuinely makes you happy, whether that's friends whether that's an aspect of yourself, whether that's whatever, like, I, if nothing else, even if you don't like me, I wish you nothing but the best. And I wish that you find an, an aspect of peace and tranquility and that you're able to go ahead and, like, thrive. Because the world is weird and it'll throw awesome and, like, rough turns at us at times. And that's what I'm saying is... I hope that you guys thrive, and even if there's, it's in a world like li like Lil Bunny, like Lil Bunny Bunny, Lil Bun B Bunny Bun. I appreciate you coming in here and your extreme energy, like you know your energy coming in and your positivity and everything has been nothing but amazing. And I I can't state it enough. Like I felt really really happy just feeling your energy all around when you came in, your comments, your chats, all of that. I appreciate you, Lil Bunny Bun. You're, and I hope I hope you know same thing I'm proud of you and I love you and all everything guys that's why I throw this out there because a lot of people don't get validated the world invalidates us at times and sometimes you feel like people do this out of a way to try and get something out of us I don't expect nothing out of it I am saying this because a lot of people sadly do not get that validation and because it's true 
sadly, as I, as I mentioned, we're in a weird way in life. And I feel like these characters have been through ups and downs. And sometimes you don't need to say stuff like that to be able to uh, to be able to say something. No, 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 no. I'm Mexican-American. <laughs> Jake, Jake the Jack. I, I, I was talking about the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I was talking about the Hawaiian shirt, dude. <laughs> I'm Latino, dude. I'm Latino. Uh, here, we'll have this. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> She's just like me for real, for real. Alright, alright chat. <clears throat> alright chat. Alright chat. <clears throat> alright chat. Alright, hold on. Hold on chat. Hey yo, hold on. Hold on chat. All right, hold on, chat. Hold on. Hey, yo, hold on. <laughs> oh, hold on, chat. All right, how does this go? Mm. Okay. We are your idols. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I I am your or wizard, yeah. Welcome to Psychulturist or something. I don't know, dude. Hi, <laughs> welcome on in, guys. <laughs> Oh God! I don't know where the. I'll bring this down. I'll bring this down. I'll bring this down. Hello, hello. I hope you guys you, fuck wizardry. The cringe is real. Dios mio. Dios mio. Hey yo, <laughs> you are a wizard. I'm not. I'm not. I hope y'all don't clip this. <laughs> anyway. anyway. まさかあの地獄みたいな空気からの大逆転あるとは思わなかった。私は最初からこうなるって思ってたよ。黙れ下手馬と <笑> So who are you doing this for, Kana? In a psychological setting, if Kana were to come into my office. Hi, Kana. Welcome to Wizards R Us. Um, you know, why do you, why why are you doing this for? Aside from monetary value, why are you doing this for? I'm doing this because I have been doing this all my life and this is what I know. Yeah, it's closer to my mouth. It's closer to my mouth. Like... Could you guys hear it? <laughs> like, I'm doing this and so on and so forth. Okay, but why? Because as a kid, my... Oh. Like, as a kid, you know, I felt this. Okay, but why? Because this was what was expected of me. Why? Because I want to get mommy's attention. Why? Because... I am worthless without people being there for me. And sadly, we have a lot of these self-talk ourselves. Sadly, a lot of times we place the self-talk, negative self-talk of ourselves, and we cover it up. We often cover up some of our main intents behind aspects like that. And once we start asking, but why, but why, but why, but why, but why, going all the way through to find our core schema, we start figuring out, wait a minute, Maybe there is some deep-rooted thing in here. Maybe it's because she doesn't feel like she's enough. So getting that validation helps her feel enough. Maybe it's because she feels... By the way, your 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 thing usually starts off with I, right? Like, I feel like I am not enough. I feel like I'm, stu I'm stupid. I feel like I don't do enough, right? I statements are the reasons why... What I'm trying to get through. The game. Not an I feel. Fuck, that is dark. But like... The, the main purpose of, of reaching this, though, is why do you feel this way? What are you going through? Why is this there? 
And these are the questions that I would I would ask on. I would take a cognitive behavioral approach and then followed by a narrative approach and attachment approach specifically to try and get her to open up. Because clearly, Kana has a lot of issues in her past. She has a lot of ghosts in the nursery and she has a lot of like, I don't know how to put it, like a lot of interpersonal issues that need to be that need to be talked about. About the approval of others. Exactly. Exactly. Guys, how is the dub for Oshinoko? I've, in case you guys don't know, Kyle's Miguel's made a whole video about it, and I think her voice acting is better than some of the voices that I heard. I'm not even going to lie. Kyle's, if you're still in here, drop the link, please, because uh, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. You know, I, I heard some voices, and I was like, mm. you know. <laughs> Hi, welcome on in. Hell's oh, God. Hell's Demented Song. Appreciate you being here. Hi, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Kyle's does the best eye. Sounds older than they should. Hmm. Hmm. It's I. It's I. Okay. I. I. As long as it's not like, what is it, ghost stories or something? Or like, because people have been telling me to watch the dub for that. So, yeah, permit Kyle's McGuiles. Kyle's, drop that, please. Please. Because as a kid, you were expected to. Because as a kid, you probably had a lot of boundary violations that happened. Because as an, as an individual, how many of us have experienced something like this where you were expected to conform because good kids do this? If we... Fucking shit. I can't believe I'm doing this. You this I'm I'm this is about to be a long one, guys. I'm sorry. Like I I'm I'm not even gonna apologize. You know what? You guys knew what you guys were getting into. This is gonna be a long one. Hi, welcome on in, Zeno Somega. I appreciate you. She's asking herself, why do I always feel like I do the opposite? Right? So let's look at this. Okay. Boom! School age! Six to eleven. How can I be good? Children need to cope with new social and academic demands. Success leads to a feeling of confidence, while failure leads to a result in feelings of inferiority. The moment that you mess up, right? The moment that there is major trauma at play, what ends up happening? This gets exemplified throughout a person's life, especially if it's not fixed through a therapeutic aspect, right? Am I good or am I bad? Children need to begin asserting control and power over the environment. Success is, is a state to a sense of purpose, and children who try to exert too much power experience disapproval, resulting in a sense of guilt. This is, uh, I believe, this is Erickson's developmental stages, right? It takes a long time to cook, yeah. So, when did she enter the industry? From two to, to, to oh, even worse, knocked. If she was two to three, here we go. Can I do things by myself or do I need to rely always on others? Here we go. Children need to develop a sense of personal control over physical skills and, and a sense of independence. Success leads to a feeling of autonomy. Failure le results in a feeling of shame and doubt and dependency. Guys, we can just take all of this because all of this starts literally being affected. If she was thrown in here, does that sound like her? I think so. I think so. I don't know about about to you, but like I'm as as I started reading this, I'm like, wait a minute, she hits that, she hits that, she hits that. Like there there was obviously It does, yeah. So, and you guys can take this on for yourself and read it this way. Just read the key questions to be answered. Is was your is your world safe or whatnot? And you'll be, you can be able to go ahead and ascertain it's a little something on yourself to meet the expectations of others. Right, right. But this is where it comes in, right? Which is quite literally from autonomy and and shame versus everything else going through because this affects everything, right? <laughs> Say that she's nineteen, right? I've gotten out watching a healthy gamer is a specific quote that seemed outlandish, but the more I thought about it, everyone has an intrinsic and infinite worth. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of problems in life have their root placing in your steams onto the exterior when it's something that needs to be resolved internally. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times people like to go ahead and like deflect outwardly, right? And that's a common deflection tactic that we we're like we've learned to do is like deflect outwardly. But a lot of a lot of internal work needs to be happened to fix our environment because our environment is not magically just going to fix itself. 
through this. Let's say that she starts going through this aspect, right? Let's say that we continue down forward. Who, 12 to 18, who am I? Where am I going? Teens need to develop a sense of self and personal identity. Success leads to an ability to stay true to yourself, while failure leads to role confusion and a weak sense of self. I.e., is she living as the her that she is, or is she living as that, like, onto, the, onto who she was? Child, prodigy, genius. Going through next one. Am I loved and wanted? Young from 19 to 40. Young adults need to form intimate relationships, loving relationships with other people. Success leads to strong relationship. Failure leads to loneliness and isolation. Looking at all of this, we can immediately start to see how all of this starts to come into play and how it can start damaging certain aspects of this. In case you find yourself in one of these and you're like, oh my God, that is me. Holy shit. Guys, seek out help. Therapy can help identify this and start making plans to, like, catch yourself in your cognitive distortions. Catch yourself in a lot of the aspects like that. Yep, 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 yep. Because my thing is, with the whole role confusion, even the love one, right, could be a love-hate relationship where she might... For example, if she starts stepping out, she's like, I no longer need uh, Aqua in my life. Uh, say that, like, I'm mad at Aqua for whatever, and she's like, I no longer need him. Um, and she's able to do that. Hey, here we go. Start steps to independence. She falls back into that. Guess what? This is just reaffirming uh, what's there and relapse is a normal part of the process. I'm in all of them. <laughs> I said that edge. No, it's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> oh my God. Ed. me being a city council member is me trying to leave a legacy in my 40s since I have no kids. Huh? I'm not going to answer that. I, I will say, brother, brother, well, yeah, mm, brother, mm. <laughs> that might be legacy building. Yeah, actually. Um, but yes, 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 absolutely. That's exactly why I'm, I, I'm bringing this conversation up like out of clay. Yep. Yep. Anyway, are you guys ready? Anya Kitty, hello, welcome in, welcome in. Oh, dude. Oh, dude, this is so good. Holy shit. Ah, oh, yeah, man. Oh. oh, no video? Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> Alright, let's go. It's because of that, Kana. Thank you, chat. Appreciate you. Wait, what? Oh, oh. Did you lose weight? Hey, yo! Hey, yo, wait, wait. It's the shot from the beginning. It's the shot. It's Peon. Peon and Mama. <laughs> Peon and Mama. They're, they're actually theory confirmed. <laughs> Unless it's like it turns out to be the finance guy under there. <laughs> oh, crap. I hit the... Oh, no. Oh, Oh god. <laughs> and stop talking about my wife having an affair. It's the finance guy at the <laughs> He's like, oh shit. <laughs> Beyond couldn't make it to this arrangement, so I'm a step in. <laughs> oh god. Hello, I'm here to collect taxes. If it isn't actually Beyond, that's an Well my my main thing is why is he this is sus. This is really fucking sus. I, I think it gets, it's Aqua. I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's a reason being. Beyond introduced himself without a shirt constantly. So why does he have a fucking sweater? This is a little sus, bro. This is a little sus. Inside the building? When he's been able to go ahead and like... Mm, 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 mm. Pecs to where are his pecs, bro? I know. There's an imposter among us. Anyway. If it is Peon, if it is Peon, if I'm just my eyes are fucking like tricking me or whatever. 
then Beyond and Mama Miyako confirmed. Beyond, Mama Miyako confirmed. さんって前職プロダンサーでしょ Ma'am, what, what are you? What? Hey, Yoshi, what's up? Hey, Ma'am, I'm trying to be the 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 e girl here. The <laughs> hey, yo, Mamacita. Oh God. Bro, okay. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. At least I can be like, I see Mem as like her genuinely probably being amazed because like amazing collabs and stuff in the future, right? Uh, and sometimes there are some, for example, there are some content creators out there in the field that I would be like this for, dude. Like that I would be like, <sighs> like fucking turning red and shit for. I'm not even gonna lie. I, I, I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie, you know? But. But through that, right, I also want to say this. It's like there are people who also change their tunes, right? Which is like, for example, this is this is something that I will always state and I like and I will always keep true to it, which is like if I have an opinion about something, it might be the wrong opinion. Yeah. And I will probably learn over time to like change it if it's a wrong opinion, especially because I tend to look at data, research points, so on and so forth to try and like form a decent opinion. But like I, I look at stuff before I change an opinion. I just don't immediately shift opinions the way people do, right? And this is an aspect that I will throw out there because there seems to be a lot of people, for example, that would be like, oh my God, I fucking hate this show. Wow. And like, let's say that this show blows up, right? And all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I love this show. Wow. Guys, this was a 10 out of 10 experience. Like, whoa. Like, I've always, I've always known that this show was amazing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, you either stand for something or you fall for nothing, right? Because, like, like stand up, dude. Like, because there, there's a lot of people out there who, like, literally will, like, shift along with the tides and stuff. And it's like, dude, I, I'm just going to be straight up about it. That's why I think with, with Mem doing this, I think this might be a genuine, like, reaction where it's, like, seeing someone that is really highly successful, seeing someone that has experience, so on and so forth, brings this out of us at times. <laughs> This voice is surprisingly good. Mm. <laughs> is it Pion? No! It is never Pion! Pion, Pion, Pion! <laughs> oh god, guys, what the fuck are you guys doing? Are you Pion's VA in the dub? Oh god. <laughs> That's right. Ed and Mama Miyako confirmed, because Ed is Pion, right? <laughs> oh god. Three times. Adorable. Adorable. They wear night caps. And Mem is on YouTube. Look at this. It's a, it's like a beautiful reflection of all three on this, right? 
like Ruby listening to music, right, with her little nightcap on, like like a little kid on that, right? Mem probably watching a YouTube video and fell asleep to it, right? Number five, Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> them just asleep and then we have kata just like just you know with her little bonnet like still asleep this is beautiful dude like <laughs> mem was watching the op analysis <laughs> oh this is great this is fucking great i bet mem is a dick i bet you mem is a fucking troller dude she's probably on on reddit and shit and like just like meme posting everything <laughs> But realistically speaking, I, I, I fucking love this. The reason why I love this, right, is the propinquity levels between them is growing, which is going to solidify them as a group. But then with this also comes the aspect of guilt tripping, of pain, of even like, like, you know, if one person's going through a really bad time, you're probably also going to take that in as well and feel it, right? Because when you're with the group, the pain of one might be the pain of others. Have you guys seen, um, there's a, a Somer, Somer or something, or Midsomer or something, like Midsummer, uh, and, like, there's, like, this girl that's giving birth that, or crying, and, like, all the, all the rest of the, of the people in there are also crying as well, like, she's crying and everyone's crying with, they're like, ah, ah, yeah, like, that type of a thing. The reason why that happens, and uh, some cultures do it as, like, a mixed thing to try and, like, uh, express emotions that you're not in so it's like an empathetic way of like doing things but what people like down in its fundamental core it comes from their sense of propinquity and even in a sense of not that extremism but in a general sense when you're with your friends when your friend hurts what do you feel when your friend genuinely is in pain like let's say that like they, they were going through a good long steady relationship they thought they were going to get married and boom uh, your the relationship breaks apart. There was infidelity or whatever. How do you usually feel when people around you that you genuinely care are in pain? You you oftentimes feel a little bit of pain. You are, and I'm not saying like you take in the full brunt. No, you might feel sad for them. You might feel be like, ah, oh, fuck, that sucks, dude. Holy shit, so on so forth. The more propinquity that you have with someone, the more like time that you have with others that, that, that you have to grow, the better, the more that that grows as well, that sense of belonging, that sense of empathy uh, towards one another. Favorite part. <laughs> Where do they get all this energy? Do you regret it? Do you regret it? Chad, I got some water for you. <laughs> Hold on. I went into fucking like Herbert the Pervert mode. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, not the voice. Sounds like it, it does. It really does. Oh God, this is, this is the ten out of ten shit. Friend Yon. Fuck。This is Aqua. This is Aqua. This is Aqua. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. What he just did right there is a very introspective psychological technique, right? He asked a motivational question, motivational interviewing question uh, that comes from an open-ended nature, right? So, for example, look at this. And he just did the CBT technique I just talked about. But why? You guys remember earlier when I was talking about, like, cognitive behavioral therapy and, and, and if... 
and if they were in front of me, like what I would ask them, but why? But why? Look at what he just did. Literally just asked a cognitive behavioral technique to be able to get them to open up. That is... Wait, what the fuck did people tweet? Uh, reminding us to stay hydrated. Yeah, toman agua, por favor. Drink, you know, sometimes we gotta, gotta, we gotta guzzle down some, some, uh, some water, right? Just make sure you don't choke on, on aqua. Are you saying aqua is a therapist? No, I'm not saying aqua is a therapist. I'm saying that he's, he might have learned some, uh, techniques to getting information. And out of that, he might have learned some, some psychological approaches for stuff. Uh, he, he, although this comes naturally, I, I'm going to be honest. A lot of, a lot of good psychologists come think about this naturally. Like, it's not something that you're like, oh, I have to think about this, this, or that, right? A lot of good psychologists, it just comes naturally. It just comes out naturally. Where you're, like, genuinely curious about a person. And for Aqua, I can genuinely see this. Where Aqua genuinely cares about Kana. There's something in Kana that allows him to be himself, so he would care. But I'm just pointing this out, that this is a therapeutic technique. It's clearly Pion. I mean, oh, his muscles here. Yeah, you're right. It might be. I don't know. It's just, it's weird that he's all fucking wrapped up, right? And when she was going to say Aqua, he appeared. And the fact that, like, yeah, it's just there's a lot of weirdness. Hey, yo, pretty amazing. Bruh. Yeah, yeah, affirmation. Affirmate it. As a therapist, this is what you do. Look, I know that, for example, um, for example, let, let me go and let me go and bring this up, right? I know that Masters is an incredible hard worker, right? And that he has come to study and he's been doing amazing things in his time here. And while he's far away from his family, you know, Masters has been amazing at both moderating and being a genuine friend pointing out areas of growth being amazing in every single aspect like this right so when you're questioning if I, like if i know a thing about you i know that you are an individual that's been through a lot and that you're working towards improving yourself and that you're learning a lot about yourself in the process i know that you're an individual who takes into account the others and you use empathy to be able to be with them you have to be able to go ahead and aff like affirm people and be there for others and yeah masters is incredible he knows this. I'm like, I, I love the man to death, you know, just as much as I love all the mods and everyone in here. But that that's why I'm pointing this out is like, when a person says this, a lot of people think, oh, they just want attention. And I hate, there's some therapist even, I'm going to be straight up. I'm going to call some therapist out. If I ever, ever hear you say, oh, my client just wants attention. I, you are not allowed to work with me. If I ever hear anything like that you are never allowed to work with me as a therapist there are too many therapists out there too many therapists out there too many individuals case managers whatnot when that when i hear this and i correct them on it they look at me like why would you say that we are here as therapists as psychologists as professionals right to help other people improve on their mental health journey not judge them they might want attention. Sure, that's a part of the process, but they're here because of their mental health journey and we're judging them. That is not an area of growth. An area of growth is being empathetic and being there with the individual and helping them grow. That shit made me not want to, want to ask that question for years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's psychologist trauma. And this is as a psychologist looking in at a lot of therapists and stuff because I've heard like, you know, stuff like this come out from time to time. But my thing is, everyone wants attention. That's not an issue. The thing that comes from here is, hey, if they come to to therapy, they come to therapy because they might want, they might need help. They they need help. A lot of people, like a lot of people, don't just wake up in the morning and are like, I have nothing to do today. I'm gonna go get therapy, even though I'm perfectly fine. No, we, there's always something that can be worked on. And if we treat people with an empathetic lens, the more that people can grow. And if we treat people with the right cultural and like, you know, cultural competence and actual like care for diversity and love and everything. Yeah. Like, 
Oof. Oof. These dark... I know. Kano's dark eyes are... Oof. I mean, therapy costs a lot. So sure, there's going to be a lot of... They got up the... the yeah, yeah. No one's ever perfectly fine, but that that's exactly why why I'm, I'm 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 talking about this because like for example, if you have a case manager, if you're currently in therapy, you don't drive with your therapist or your psychologist or your psychiatrist, whoever you, whoever you're not driving with. Guess what? Ask for another one. If you're struggling, if say that like you're like, oh wait a minute, I, and you're in the U.S. for example. And, and a lot of other countries have this as well. And you're like, oh, but therapy costs a lot. I've been wanting to go, but I'm afraid because it costs a lot. There's a sliding scale fee. A majority of countries, a majority of states, a majority of everything have a sliding scale fee. Well, they will adjust according to your needs, right? I, I'm just throwing this out there because it seems as though... It seems as though individuals... Like, there's still a stigma around it. Around people asking for help and getting the help that they need. And this is why I'm like ringing these things and I'm saying this because it's like, if we are all empathetic, we can all learn and grow together and we can help one another out. Anyway. Affirm her, please. Oh, Lily Bunny Bun. ピエヨンちょっと好きになっちゃった。I'm your fan, Kana. Oh. Kana, I am your fan. I am your fan. I am your fan. I am your fan. <laughs> Kana bro's another dude. Oh, dude. <laughs> Guys, drop some Doritos in the chat if you're a Kana fan, please. Show her that love. I am a Kana stan. I know, I know. We we must protect Kana at all costs now. Wow, didn't <laughs> いるだけで全部がピーマン味になる。わかる。ピーマン体操の時に<笑> Kana, my sweet summer child, Kana, pobrecita, pobrecita, oh, oh, brother man, oh, this hurts, this hurts, oh, no, it's really telling how, how fast she falls for you, yeah, yeah, it, 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 you want to talk about, like, you know, falling for someone in secure attachment style, there we go, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, watch her fall in love with the same person again. She's just like me for real, for real, guys. Guys, no, I hope. Kana needs therapy. Yes, yes, she does. No, money's not everything. ねえ、やっぱ動画で見るのとは全然違う。体型ももっとがっちりしてるイメージだったけど、意外と実物はスラップ。Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 学校なんてアクタンと同じじゃん。If <laughs> I'm right, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. I hope you guys know this, guys. If I am right in any way shape or form, I will grab my fucking keyboard. No, I'm not going to break it cuz it's the only keyboard I have. But I will <laughs> <laughs> oof, oof. Hi, Viperia. Thanks so much for the follow. Guys, drop a drop a shout out to Viperia. Another amazing content creator. Show them some love and support. I know. I, I will I will literally grab this Senor Pinguino and fucking eat him. Like, if my theory is correct, I will grab Senor Pinguino and fucking uh, eat him. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, like, oof. <laughs>
Also, wait, did I just read that correct? Let, let me back it up a couple seconds here. Hold hold, hold on. Beyond must be busy, but he's coming here every day. Aqua must really care about Kana. Oh, my God. Aqua must really care about Kana, dude. He's going there every day. If that Aqua must really care about Kana, dude. Care or control? I mean, both. But uh, why not? Por qué no los dos? Not just Kana, but the group. The group. He must really fucking love them. I don't know what reason. I, I really don't know what reason. You know, Senor Pion or Aqua who's pretending to be him. Because clearly, he looks different. That's not Senor Pion. I'm assuming it's Aqua based off of the context clues. He's, he's doing this. But what I do know is this. He's showing up every day, according to them. He cares about them. Senor Papillon. <laughs> He's an idol otaku, though, right? I mean, he loves his sister. And wants. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But that, that that's what I'm saying is there's a sense of love there or there's a sense of actual, like... Because people like to paint Aqua as just bad, right? Aqua is just evil. No, I don't think so. I think classifying a character as evil without them ever classifying themselves as that, it's a little rough. I think he has rough moments just the way that all of us do. Yeah, we all have good days. We all have bad days. We all have some morally questionable stuff that we've done in the gray. But we're like, I'm not sure how I feel about that, you know. But like him showing showing uh, love and support and whatnot, I think that that's that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> It's kind of slim. <laughs> oh god, Chef Mem. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm practicing, guys. I'm practicing. I think Mem knows. I think Mem knows. I, I, I think Mem knows. Also, baking soda? Hey, yo. Let's make a volcano together so I can... Uh, never mind. I'm gonna shut the fuck up and not continue this thing. <laughs> Mem is very observant. I think Mem knows. I think Mem. Knows. I want to lick that. Hey, yo, no, hold on. That was not me. That was someone up there. I want to lick that baking soda so bad. Hold on, hold on. Coffee vinegar. <laughs> oh. oh, that was not me, that was a chatter. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Was I not fucking talking about this? Wait a minute! No, not yet. Not yet. You are safe, my friend. You are safe, my friend. Was I not talking about this? <laughs> Hell's Demented Song, thanks so much for the follow. Oh, man. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. Three or four. Th you want me to hug Senor Pion? Senor Pingüino, come on, come on. Está bien, pobrecito. Ay, Senor Pingüino, pobrecito. Ah, there you go. Is that better? Is that better instead of throwing Senor Pinguino? Okay, there you go. Why are the blurb? I don't know. Why are the blurbs active? They shouldn't be. There we go. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I'm glad. There we go. The blurbs are off, guys. I didn't even know they were active. I didn't hear them. 
But through that, Pinguino getting the love, I know, I know. Let's go. Specifically, what I, was, what I was hitting on was like there were three or four, and she's going through this whole recollection. Clearly, there is a big need or there is a big hit in, a, in terms of emotional stability, right? In terms of like what, what, I don't know how to put it, what Aqua means to her. That states everything. Right, because Aqua is not just a random dude. Aqua clearly needs something for her. And through an attachment like psychological perspective, what we're looking at is someone that can go ahead and trigger you in not a negative way. People like to think of triggers as just negative ways. Uh, and I know that right now lo looks like a negative way, but can get an emotional reaction. That is usually what a trigger is, is whenever we get an, a reaction out of something, right? So what triggers her, Aqua does. Her loss changed Aqua. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Aqua was the first person to outshine her, so I guess he directly connected to her self-esteem issue. Yeah, in a big way, right? Kana.exe stopped existing. But that's why I'm like, why do you think... What do you think? Where do you think her attachment started? When she was forced to do this? When, or like, even if it was a joke, joining the entertainment industry is very, very rough on a kid. There's a lot of expectations and stuff being thrown on you that I don't think a kid should go through. Uh, in terms like that. True PS4. Hey yo. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the fuck? <laughs> I had a feeling. Let's go. I was right. I was right. I was right. I was fucking right. <laughs> Senor Pink Wino. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. 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 I am a wizard. I am a wizard. <laughs> no, but like, for me, it's like, this is this is awesome because it's showing that, oh, look at, look at those muscles. Holy shit. Y'all better make a poll. If y'all vote for it, if y'all get like 90%, 95% or higher, I'll go, I'll go pick them up. There you go. Throw up a poll mods. If they get 95% or higher, I'll go pick up Senor Pinguino right now. Otherwise, he stays in the Shadow Realm. All right, there you guys go. There you guys go. <laughs> but through that, like, it's interesting because it, that takes a lot for, like, who recommended who to do what, right? It's a way to fulfill her esteem need has made Kana equate her worth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, even through that, right? Because, like, esteem does does not necessarily mean where the anxious attachment starts. Anxious attachment can uh, start from your basic needs, from not having your basic needs met. And I, and I think that's a, that's a big portion as to, like, where things may come, right? Even, even the expectations are where things may come from. <laughs> Bro, they're on a Discord call? <laughs> True. 21 people are voting now, bro, dropping you guys down to 80%. Wow. People do... Ooh. We must return him. I'll tell you guys what. You guys reach 85% and I'll go pick him up. Also, Aqua does a really, really good peon voice. You see? Oh, dude. Does he... Does he... I, I mean, it makes sense. In the context of being at a beach, he's, he, dude, he's caked up. But in the concept of being in the in, in the beach, it makes sense. But also, do you think he has multiple pairs of just the blue underwear or blue blue whatever? Or basic needs can cause anxious attachments. So, like, how do you attach yourself to someone who feeds you? Makes sense. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, this is why, like, uh, like your attachment styles is actually start off from when you're born, right? And they start, like, shifting and drifting according to trauma and events that happens, right? When you have a secure attachment, like, from 0 to 18, hopefully, 
uh, you know, you have both caregivers. They love you very much. They're very supportive, whatnot. You have a secure attachment, usually, in adulthood. If you have the loss of a parent, uh, or there is no parent, there's one parent there, a lot of times you you get an anxious and insecure attachment style. Uh, and say that they're struggling for food, struggling for security, struggling for your mom being there or dad being there. That's a, a, a anxious attachment style going up. So just think about it as like a point spar, right? Where every single time a trauma, traumatic event happening, emotionally absent parents, you can get you, that you, that can go into an avoidant attachment style or an ambiguous or ambivalent. So just think about it like any time a bad thing happens, an insecure attachment style gets a point. You get up one point for every every time a bad thing happens, and that's sort of like the breakdown as to how individuals can go from one to the other, right? Aqua probably owns a tracksuit. He's Japanese. I know it makes sense when you break it down, but as an adult, it's wild to see how much of one's life can be affected by just small shit in your childhood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if it's not fixed, right? Because it centralizes. Like, that's that's one of my biggest things. All right. Wow. It seems as though people are not wanting to know being we know back. Oof. Oof. <laughs>頼ってくれるのは嬉しいよ。だけど、ちょっとショックだな。君が僕になりすましても誰も気づかないんだから。大した問題よ。大した問題。できる人はできるんじゃないですか。うーん。でもこれやる必要あった。わざわざ僕にな
hits the Kokoro in a way I don't think he even understands. The same oh oh, oh man 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 the the I burnt all my points for you to Ray Lai, you can ask Masters. Masters has like two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand points. Ask Masters to help out or something. Oh. Dude, the power dynamics. <laughs> Yo, welcome on in, YouTube brought me. Oh, so they are just a headpiece. Okay. Okay, for a second there, I thought it was just like an invisible... Like, nobody else can see the hordes. So why do you think that is, guys? Where she says that at university, your appeal drops 30%. Is it because of the aspect of like, I'm gonna I'm gonna call a spade a spade. I'm gonna be straight up, innocence, innocence, leftover cake. That aspect that we talked about earlier. Like, hmm, hmm. It's really interesting that Aqua. Mm, developmental priorities. Wait, she's not with the. Please, guys, save Senor Pinguino. Oh, no, 83%. So close. Going down. Wow. All right, I guess Senor Pinguino is locked in the Shadow Realm. Wow. True mood, 28,500 points. Oh, no. <laughs> ほんと。楽しそうでいいわね。先輩は楽しくなさそうでよくないね。むしろ。どうしてあんたはそんなに楽しそうなのよ。明日がどうなるかなんて誰にも予想できない。私たちみたいな子猫は大ブーイングかも
Wow. Wow. That means the mods put a... Wait, wait, wait. My first love! Wait, 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 hey, yo? Ruby X Aqua? Hey, 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 yo, Ruby X Aqua? Hey, yo! <laughs> Sweet home Alabama! Or Japan, I guess. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're not doing Alabama. No. I don't see that happening, but I do see a weird power distortion forming. If Aqua were to come through and actually reveal himself, yeah? If uh, if Aqua were to come through and reveal himself as a doctor, what does this do? What does this do? The paratoxic distortion? Poof! You were him! Oh my god, you're here! Oh! Like, wow. 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 An idol otaku? Aww. Oh no, you're trying to make it big so that way he can notice you. No. No. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that hurts. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Smack it. <laughs> Wake up. Oh, true. Actually, very true. The conflict of self in that. Huge. Well, I mean, let, let's be honest. How many of us go through an instinct like that? This is very. This is a very real show. This is why I, 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 I recommend this show to a lot of people. Like legitimately like yo you actually like you actually want to learn and put a lot of theories into play how many of us often get like represented by our pre their pre other people's previous versions of us yeah a majority of people do i'm just gonna be straight up about it a majority of people like for example oh wow i remember when you were skinny i've been told that I remember when you would like, you know, whatever, or like when you were bigger or this or that, instead of taking in the you that you are today. Wow, you're you're you were really good on stage. What happened? Are you still that person? Or you, you wow, and you did this, and it's like, wait a minute, no, I'm I'm a newer person. Yeah, like, chill, chill. Talk about identity issues, esteem issues, all of these things, right? Ed, I remember when you were only an apprentice mage, right? I recommended this show to a ton of people, but it's weird they couldn't get past episode one. I mean, it can be tough. It can be tough on some people. Like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> he never takes it off. <laughs> oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no oh 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 no oh 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 i was about to fucking just throw that kinda 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 dude oof now peon isn't saying that peon isn't saying that hold on hold, i'm not a wizard I'm not a fucking wizard. Hold on. I'm not a wizard. It all just comes from the backgrounds of psychology and stuff. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be straight up about it, right? 
She blue screened <laughs> Terrence face. She blue screened. But I will say this. What the fuck? Like, that's l exactly, exactly, exactly DDR. That's falling for the same guy twice. And he was being real with you. Oh, he didn't. Like, while he's masked up, he's being real with you. Oh, man. Man, the Emperor always denied being. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's traumatizing by itself. Well, I mean, th this all comes down. I hate to put it this way. If you have dated and you fall and you find yourself falling into that same cycle, right? If I'm pointing this out there, it's a good representation of that, of people falling into the, like falling in love for the same cycle of things instead of finding out why, you know, or whatnot. Like, mm. たちが立つのは<笑> Wait, wait, wait. Are, are, are they performing this episode? Hold on. Are they performing this episode? Hold on. Are we getting a full-on fucking performance this episode? Hey, yo. V. Mama V. It's a Mama V. Welcome on in. Hey, V. How you doing, my friend? How you, I hope you're doing well. Guys, drop some... Give a shout-out to V. Mama V, please. V, what's up? How are you? How was your stream? I hope it was well. You have an ad. Oh, no. Oh no, V has an ad. V has come too. K Colonel, V has come too. <laughs> oh no. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm waiting for V to, v to be able to come on in here. Guys, if you just came in from V's raid, hi, I appreciate you guys being here. In case you guys don't know me, my name's Ed. I'm a psychologist, I tend to psychoanalyze uh, at video games, anime, everything in between. I was just saying, V, yo, welcome on in. How you doing? How was your stream? I appreciate you being here. の人づてだね。まあ、ビープマッチの振り付けってハードなのばっかだし、ちゃんと寝ないときついよね。うちは踊りメインだからね。どうしよう。結局一睡もできなかった。ああ。それじゃあ楽屋に行くわよ。イエ
And that's not by bi- it's not bipolar. No, 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 no. Because we all are humans. We all have emotions, and we all go through these ups and downs. And sometimes life may bring us up and down. You know. But that's that's the main reason why I'm throwing this out there is. Ah, uh, the Gib. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you're you're amazing. Make sh- also, guys, make sure to leave a comment, like button, uh, share the video whenever it goes out on YouTube. Uh, it's not gonna be up tomorrow because the editors are a little busy this week, so it might may take a little while. But that's why I'm bringing this up. Like these are big, big concepts that like need to be talked about, need to be like you know seen as. It's like it's not a bad thing. We just need to be aware of our own sh- like circle habits and stuff. <laughs> Mommy Miyoko's fucking fine though. Oh my god. I'd have some I I I'd make mommy Miyoko a true mommy, dude. Welcome to auditions, ladies. Where quite literally everyone looks and acts the same as you. Uh, and you're all fighting for the same five minutes of space. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for, for, no, I'm, I'm going to be straight up. Like even in acting stuff, like for auditions and stuff, say, say that they were like, oh, we want, uh, a wizard, like a Latino individual to like, must be, uh, oh, sounds good. V have a good night. Be safe. Appreciate you. Must be this, this height, this weight, this, whatever. Say that I were to go through it. There's a lot of everyone's gonna take up the space. Everyone's gonna look very, very similar to me, and everyone's gonna like kind of be in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show choir flashbacks. Exactly, exactly. It sounds like this too. ステージが多いフェスではこんなものよ。出演者や関係者数百人が全部詰め込まれて荷物の置き場もない。着替え部屋もないから、各々のパーテーション裏で着替える。でも撮影用の場所だけは綺麗なんだね。カオスだね。オッケー、オッケー。メインステージに呼ばれるくらいの有名グループは別室を用意してもらえるわ。オフコース。近アイドルやそこそこのアイドルの扱いはこんなもの
<laughs> I don't think that's fair. No, I, I genuinely don't think that's fair. Uh, realistically speaking, I think that that's a lot of. I know, I know. My my voice, my uh, my voice is a little lower than that. So, so I'm like, mm. be on her Mickey. Don't matter. Uh, my my thing is all these expectations can cross a lot of people to start cracking. You're if, how much do you value other people's opinions on you versus yourself? That, that's a big aspect that I'm throwing out there. How much do you value? And, and this is a genuine question for you guys in chat as a self-reflective moment. How much do you value the expectations of others and or the opinions of others and the opinion of yourself? Because that makes a lot. Like, and, 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 oof, oof, oof. A lot more than I should. Lily Bunny Bon, dude, are you on the Discord? I hope you are so we can chat a bit, because oof. Oh. Thank you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, my heart. Oh. いったんここまでで時期を見計らって次のリレースを。Let's the expectations, trying to live up to the expectations of others and being rejected. Trying to be, like, you know, loving and whatnot and trying to, like, have this affirmation that you need met and then being rejected. You're talking about, like, if you want to talk about, like, deep anxiety, deep-rooted, like, issues that may come out of this. Uh, trust issues even within yourself and I can't even imagine what her whole, like, her daily internal monologue is like. Like, this for me is scary because it hurts. It hurts how real and how often this happens to a lot of people. Kana's own internal monologue is one of, like, you know, I'm, I I can never meet other people's expectations or satisfy them. I'm too old. I'm this. I'm that. So she's it's like she's running out of time. And she's acting and she's doing all of these things. That's, wow. Wow. Kana needs to be protected. I am dropping my special Dorito for Kana here. Guys, if you guys want to protect Kana, drop your Doritos. Because holy shit, dude. Like, that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of everything for Kana to go through. Like, no. She's a teen, dude. What are you doing? The time that, like, oh my god. The time that she needs you the most. You don't just fucking leave them. Like, literally, everyone's left her side, even her mom. Even her mom just decided to leave her side. I'm over here fucking tearing up because this is like she's putting on a mask, but this is like a lot of pain. Holy shit, dude. Like, I, I'm like, oh, this hurts. I'm, I, I'm on the verge of tears. Like, her dad had apparently left. Mom's like, oh, you'll be fine. Even like knowing the fact that, like, hey, she hasn't gotten a lot of jobs, even though this is like something that I pushed her to do. And wow. Wow. Her, where is her support system? Where are the people that genuinely care about her and want her to go and succeed? And oh my God, dude. That's why she thought it was nice that the director still lives with his mom. Yeah, actually, it makes sense, Photoshop Puffin. Oh. Yeah, you're not needed anymore. You're not important. You're not loved. No, you have value. ネットの書き込みみたいな Pre-show shit. Pre-show P. Does wonders. Just trust me on this one. You go over, 
You take the biggest dump of your life. I know that this might be TMI, but it does wonders. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be straight up about it. Like, Kana needs a hug. Yeah, Ruby needs a hug. But like, realistically speaking, before a performance, a lot of actors, you'll see them, you'll see them run and do this as a way so that they're like, it's not like, oh, I need to go pee. No, you're fully cleansed. You'll be fine, type of thing, right? Uh, a hug, no, they need to go pee. Good to know. Every single sports anime character before the match does that too, Ed. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, even in university, and even some of the professional theater and, like, plays and stuff, a lot of people were running to the restroom right before the show started because that's a good way of, like, of doing stuff. Of, like, get, getting ready and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I went through something similar with my family. I still feel so left behind. My husband has helped me through it along with my therapist i'm glad i'm glad that you do have a supportive husband and a therapist helps them into the demented song i i actually I, I can't say that i can't state that enough like having a good support system is everything and the fact that you like i'm sorry like i i can't even un begin to understand like the amount of pain and everything that you must have gone through through that because that's a lot but the fact that you were like do you build up resiliency and you have that support network wow thank you so much for sharing that by the way that's that's very vulnerable of you and i, I can't even empathize enough with you that's amazing that I uh, like, I appreciate it. You're wonderful. Thanks, thanks for that, guys. Drop, yeah, drop some Doritos, please, because that's like, yeah, yeah. Having a good support system is very, very valuable. Ruby. ルビー。ちゃじゃないのあんたなんかに心配されるほど落ちぶれてないわよ。臆病な子犬ほどよく吠えるんだよな。えいよ。でもよかった。先輩もビビってるって思ったら少し安心してきた。おや。あれ割と
失敗させたくないあんたたちにあんな思いはさせたくないのよ一人じゃないから怖いのよ Yeah, her attitude is her arm. Exactly why. <laughs> why? Hehehe. I was a senpai's 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 I, I, me duele, I, yay, yay, yay. Canta y no llores. ¿Por qué? Cantando. <laughs> no, dude. Oh, the star. I know the star is shining, but it's also the right, like, the, 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 this is a Ruby W, dude. This is a straight up Ruby W. Like, her motivating her, her genuinely being there and being empathetic and caring about one another. This is the type of fucking positivity I want to see, guys. This is this is the type of lift me up that we need. This is why we need to go and have individuals that care about us, that help us grow, that allow us to go ahead and like like blossom into the individuals that we need to be, into the stars that we need to be, right? Guys, I I I'm gonna put it put it this way. This this is why I'm throwing it out there, right? You guys through the darkest moments, I see you guys for the light that you are. I see you are as the, all as the like literally the the amazingness, like the glowing dust of a star that once was and that will be again. I see you all as individuals that are growing even through the toughest of times and have insane resiliency and can go up and down. And sometimes we may be in our downest point, but guess what? We can all lift each other up to be better and to be higher and to increase and to do what we want to do. And that is exactly why I will always state, dude, this is a safe space for all of you. This is why it's here for you. Because anime is a medium that can change us. Anime, anime and video games are mediums that can help us grow, that can help us achieve newer things just as much as music is just as much as dance is just as much as theater is as much as every single other expectations and stuff being thrown out there guys you are all incredible and capable of doing so many amazing things the same way that these people these characters have done so many amazing things and in an aspect they're showing us that even throughout all of this trauma they're able to go ahead and start taking these steps forward and i want you to know hey it might be scary it might be fucking terrifying and sometimes we might want to close the door and not let people in because change is scary but change will come and I want to be there and I want to help you take that first step out the door and be ready for that change and accept changes that come for your own betterment so that that way you are capable of that. That way you are capable of growth. That way you are capable of empowering yourself and doing better. Not just that, but maybe helping out others in the future and helping empower them as well. You guys are the fucking future. You guys are the capability and the ripples that will go ahead and have a long term effect and be able to help others grow out in this environment that has not been the greatest at times, but can be great. You that are sleeping right now, right? Are you that are watching this on your phone or maybe you're groggy in the morning getting your coffee? It doesn't matter what time it is. If you're watching this and you're understanding this, you are valued. You are cared for. You are important and you are an aspect of change and you can change. This is all up to you. And if you've been waiting, you're like, dude, I've been waiting for a call or for a message or for, I don't know, a sign for me to be able to do something, get motivated to try something. This is that sign. This is that, that opportunity, that aspect that you've been wanting for someone to say, you can do it, that someone is proud of you, that people are there for you. People are there for you. People genuinely love you. And if you are going through a really, really rough time, if you are if you are in, a, in the, the, the lowest of lows, we've all been, I've been there. I can't even imagine what you must be going through currently, but we've all been in a low state. Reach out for help. If you don't have a support network, there is a support network available for you. There are friendships available. You can join the Discord. We have a whole venting and support section there for people that need it. We literally have people that make lifelong friends, people that work on games together the way that people in the Discord are. We literally have a whole environment set up for you because we care. I genuinely care, and I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed, and I want you to be the best version of you that you can be. Not the best version of you that others expect. Fuck that. But the best version of you that you can be. That is why I'm saying... I am so passionate about mental health. I am so passionate about this. I'm so passionate about the impact that it's had because anime for me has had one of the biggest impacts ever. It has changed my outcome. It has changed my life and it has made me the person that I am today. And I always wanted to hear as a child, someone talk about these mental health concepts and, and expand on them. 
I want to be that voice of change for people, that voice of inspiration. I want to be there for people so that that way they can at least start their journey of change or their journey of ascendancy or growth or whatever they need that to be. And I want to go ahead and, and at, like help out others that need it. That's why all that content is unmonetized because I don't care about money. What I care about is you guys growing, showing that love and quite literally being the best version of you, being happy and being the best version of you that you can be. I love you guys. Fuck, do I love you guys. I love this show. I love anime. And you guys have made me fucking fall further in love with it with all of your love and support. Holy shit. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to go on an off... <laughs> I don't mean to go on an off-script rap like this. Holy shit. <laughs> I thought that... Holy shit. <laughs> oh, Lily Bond. No. I don't mean to go to a fucking like... Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude i just fucking cooked a little too long holy shit <laughs> appreciate you guys i really really do holy crap uh, uh <laughs> someone get in a cannoli let it rain doritos their moments th these moments are why i'm here oh well i'm glad i'm i'm glad and i genuinely do mean that guys it's this show has been a beautiful semblance for an aspect of growth and being able to talk about it and that's i'm yeah i blown away you do this every time and that's great i'm almost exhausted oh ways to try to help my relatives that avoid therapy well i'm glad Eliana. ruby triggering ed in a good way yeah man that's what i'm saying is these characters can bring out so many emotions and everything oh the smile oh, i need these figurines when they come out guys Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Oh my God! Oh my God! Are we getting it? Oh, the black rose! Oh my God! This is so. Oh. It's the opening! It's the opening! They're doing it! That's the opening! <laughs> That's the opening! Let's go! I'm uh, talking about the visual, guys. Hold on, y'all seem to think I was talking about like the person. It's the visual, guys. The visual of all three girls. <laughs> oh. So, so good. Oh. These headphones are a fucking godsend, dude. Like, I can feel the reverb on everything. Like, <laughs> like holy shit, dude. Oh, oh it's a godsend. All right, guys. I, uh, when you did the chain analysis and consult, did they know the case study was from the anime? No, they did not. <laughs> Masters, they did not. We, we just did a chain case study without them knowing uh, that it was an anime, which makes it like a hundred times more interesting, I think, right? <laughs> That's so cool. Dude, it, it's fucking amazing. I, 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 just, I, I just can't, dude. Holy, I, I told them afterwards. Some of them want to come on, though. Some of them really do want to come on, and I might invite them for the final episode. We'll see. Uh, but that would be like 12 of us in this room together, so I don't know how the, how, how the fuck we'd do something like that. Uh, but guys, holy shit, what a phenomenal episode. That's all I got to say is, like, what a phenomenal episode. Like, that blew my mind. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Guys, if you guys enjoyed this analysis so far, drop those Doritos. Show that love and support, guys. I, I would sincerely appreciate it. If you guys are on Discord, on Discord, on YouTube, hit that uh, like button, subscribe. Share this with your friends, guys. There's one episode left this coming Friday, guys. Whenever this goes up, this coming Friday. We are doing the final episode here live in like the best fucking quality you've probably have, have seen in this channel ever. Guys, you should come check it out. Come join us. Say one final goodbye for this season together as a big Oshinoko family. Come and join us as we take the time to go ahead and analyze. I hope that you've been able to go ahead and take this time to go ahead and like process stuff and feel whatever you need to feel. Because it is deep. It is, it is, it is something that like, yeah... A little ground shaking, a little earth shaking, and a little everything. Because holy bananas, ladies and gentlemen. I just, I just, I, I'm sort of mind blown time and time again. Like, what sort of emotions this show can draw. I am planning on doing an Akan and Mindcrawl. I am planning on doing a Ruby Vine Crawl. I'm planning on doing a Mindcrawl on pretty much all of them at this point. Because this shit is so fucking good that I... I, I am I it is in my UR rank. It is in my LR rank, my legendary fucking rare rank. 
because of, of how impactful this show has been. Guys, make sure to come over and vote on the show that you guys want to go ahead and see with us continuing off of this. As I mentioned, there are six currently that, that are going in for uh, a Beyond Minecraft. They're on Discord. Make sure you guys vote. Come and join the Discord, by the way. That's where, where we can chat all the time. I don't expect anything else other than, like, you know, out of that. But, wow. Wow, 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 ladies and gentlemen. I am fucking mind blown. Mind blown. This is some powerful shit. Powerful shit. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate y'all. Have a good night. Thanks so much for being here. We do this every Friday and Sunday. This coming Sunday, we have another stream, ladies and gentlemen. Come in and join. Join us as we talk about a bunch of different anime. Uh, and we finish up some of the current anime that we're watching. Starting July 2nd, we have the voice actress and we're doing a bunch of other stuff. Come and join, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I can say. I am super duper excited. We're trying to reach partner. So that's around 75 people live almost every stream. If you guys could help us out, that would mean the world. I appreciate you all. You guys are absolute fucking goats, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, I appreciate y'all. Have a good night. Practice that self-care. Hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. Practice that self-care. I love y'all. Be safe, guys.